There's nothing quite like witnessing a launch firsthand. And a handful of our reporters were lucky enough to be there during the launch of Chandrayaan 3 when it took to the skies from Sri Harikota. And from the ground, they explained to us what the entire procedure is going to be looking like after speaking to ISRO chairman, Mr. Somanath, as well on Chandrayaan 3's journey. Behind us is a model of the rocket GSLV MK2 and the LV M3 will resemble this model only and on either side of this rocket, the columns you see, those are S200 solid state boosters and in the center part where it is written GSLV, that is the liquid stage and on top of it, we will have the cryogenic engine C25. Over that, that particular pod with the Indian national flag, that is a heat shield which will be carrying Chandrayaan 3. This is a module which will have a propulsion module, a lander module and the rover. The launch vehicle will first orbit Earth before entering moon orbit. At the final lunar 100 km circular polar orbit, the propulsion module carrying the launch module with the lander and rover will be launched through vehicle injection. Then the separation of the launch module from the propulsion module will take place. The propulsion module this time also has one scientific payload as a value addition. It will become operational post-separation of the lander module. The propulsion module equipped with spectropolarimetry of habitable planet Earth or shape will then work for future discoveries of smaller planets in reflected light. It would also allow scientists to probe into a variety of exoplanets which would qualify for habitability or for presence of life. The lander module in the meantime will orbit closer to the lunar south pole. The main aspect of this, the, uh, uh, this mission is to uh, uh, do a soft la landing in the lunar, on the lunar surface and it, this is the second attempt of ISRO. Here also ISRO has made it very clear that this time they are going for a failure-based model. They are calling this a failure-based model because whatever information that was gathered from Chandrayaan 2 has been incorporated to it. The issues with Chandrayaan 2 was called as error accumulation which led to crash landing. It is not a failure. So all the lander module has to do is take a picture compare it with the data that has been fed already into it and it, it has only do final corrections to avoid any object that is 30 centimeters or bigger for a soft landing. ISRO claims that as all other parameters have been successful, it is only going for a soft landing post which releasing the rover on the lunar surface. Soft landing of the lander happens when it lands intact on the lunar surface that prevents damage to the spacecraft. This will ensure survivability of instruments on board the spacecraft. This has so far been successfully achieved by only three other countries, USA, Russia and China. And the very important aspect is that ISRO this time has given the, the lander a lot of space of deciding on its own because the Chandrayaan 2 was desi I mean, designed to only land in an area 500 meters into 500 meters. But right now it has been extended to 4.5 kilometers to 2.5 uh, kilometers in that area the, the uh, lander can land. So all these uh, uh, parameters have been set. The main aspect of Chandrayaan 3 is for a soft landing on uh, the moon's surface because every other parameters, ISRO has succeeded. After successful landing at the South Pole, the lander will release the rover. During this mission, the rover will make qualitative and quantitative elemental analysis to derive the chemical composition. Infer mineralogical composition of the South Pole lunar surface. This is critical for mineral and chemical finding as well as for future manned moon mission Gaganyaan of ISRO. Chandrayaan 3 is all set to ensure that this sky is not our limitation. The mystery of the universe awaits beyond this for exploration.